The recognized symbol of excellence in online entertainment. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Sports Church right here on Levet Radio Syndicate. I'm your host, John Kerman, a.k.a. Mini. I'm a United States Marine Corps veteran. 2311 was my MOS. I yes, I'm a card carrier member of the E4 Mafia, allegedly, and I'm an OG of the Vet Radio Syndicate. Uh, sports Church show with three Marine Corps veterans and a Patriot breaking down the week in sports. And let's start ahead with, uh, you know, initial thoughts, a little hot takes. We're going to go straight to the pook dog wearing that god-awful Chicago Bears uh, <laughs> spell cap. But, uh, yeah, what's up, Pook? What's new? What's uh, what's happening? What's interesting? How you doing? Great. Everything's great. You got to love the Chicago Bears, my man. You got They're giving a game new. Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You have, to, you have to love the Bears. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> the Saints are doing a real good job of loving the Bears. Yeah. <laughs> what's the score right now, who? Oh, that's that's right. a three point spread. It's yeah, uh, it's a 23 three to 13. Right now. <laughs> 10 now? 10. Yeah. 23 13 Saints. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. It was 16 to 3 the last time. Was. Yeah. That really struck. Yep, 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 yep. Hey, that, that's okay, though. Nothing to really get down about. We had we had an interesting weekend in UFC action, my man. Cool. I had, cool. I had a lot of fun with it just because. I recognized all the fighters fighting, you know, another Las Vegas card, you know. So that was a lot of fun. Nice. All right. Nice. Uh, what's uh, what's new with you, T? I mean, besides your uh, face. Oh. Hey, I yeah, love the last, face. That, oh, that's last cute. night I can wear the uh, skull mask before uh, next year. Because, yeah, Halloween was yesterday. So all the weekend's <laughs> over. Got to gotta rock the skull mask one last time. Um, <laughs> just start wearing that all the time as a facial covering. You'll be cool. Yeah, there we go. Well, I, I got one that covers the whole face too, but I don't know where I put that one. <laughs> but you I can't it. drink beer with that one on, so I got this one so I can drink while I'm wearing it. You literally lost your face, huh? It happens. It happens. Pops, what's new with you? What's happening? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I uh, F1 today was outstanding. The uh, Mercedes. Uh, won their fourth, or excuse me, their seventh consecutive uh, constructors championship. Weird. Uh, and and uh, Lewis Hamilton won his 93rd uh, F1 race, which makes him the world record holder. And he announced that, yes, he intends to race next year, but it might not be in Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> but But that's because he and Mercedes are negotiating, so. Oh, yeah, I know, but I think that's what that is. What are they negotiating? Aren't they paying him like thirty million dollars a year? Yeah, but he wants more. What do you want? <laughs> and he lives in a country with no taxes. Yeah, exactly. He lives in Monaco. For those who don't know, he is a, of course, British native. Who and they have us. Uh, they have a pretty steep uh, tax system over there. So he just decided to move and become a uh, uh, Monaco national and doesn't pay any income taxes on his earnings. So, well, except that well, so, many those, so many of those countries where you go to, they take your taxes out from where, where you, you win the money. So, uh, well, they yeah, take the, a proportion. So, the prize money is nothing compared to his salary, correct? Right. I mean, if he wins every single race, he doesn't come to come to within a tenth, does he? Yeah, something like that. I don't yeah, know. I mean, it's, yeah, but still. <laughs> Oh, good old Lewis. I mean, you, you don't got to love him. You just got to respect the shit that he can drive the fuck out of a race car. <laughs> There's no he does, doubt he, that. He's, he's amazing. He, I mean, he fell to third on the start, and it, there was no way he was going to do anything. And it, people just fell apart in front of him. It was crazy. Yeah. Wow. Both Goss was leading, and uh, 
got over a curb, ruined the the, uh, the belly panel on his car, started <laughs> floating down, and Lewis went around the outside. So it was like, okay. <laughs> it's like the tiger effect, huh? Yeah. You got that guy weird. behind you, and you oh, 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 shit. I got to be perfect, or he's going to get me, and you end up screwing up, and sure enough, he gets you. Sunday Chicago, Tiger. Chicago just won. Uh, that one. They just scored a touchdown. Uh-oh. And they're, oh, and they're, they're making a comeback. Oh, it's going to be 23 20. It's going to be 23 20. Like you said, a three point spread. <laughs> who, who's, who scored it? I I don't, look at you. You're fine. Stop worrying. <laughs> uh, well, in our league, I got David Montgomery on the bench, but I'm losing in my other league, and I got David Montgomery playing. Oh, good. I hope you are. Um, <laughs> aren't just, we vicious today <laughs> oh man it's it was not a good not a good thing I, I actually managed to stay away from fantasy football uh until i went over to my best friend's uh best friend's house godfather he was best man at my wedding godfather to my uh, son and uh he's like so how, how are you doing in fantasy i'm like well thanks for asking because i hadn't thought about it and i looked and i'm like oh jesus <laughs> like no everybody just like you know what mini won four straight let's just phone it in today and just throw them <laughs> said nobody but uh in my head for a few minutes i was thinking that i'm like thanks a lot guys for phoning it in but uh i don't know i had a, a good halloween yesterday uh pretty funny halloween because i got to my son dressed up as a cowboy and uh well we dressed him up as a cowboy uh, i should say that and uh he got to take a picture with a six foot five uh, uh black indian uh so that was funny um <laughs> like an he, india person or a native no, american no 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 like native american like yeah uh, not that okay so okay. yeah uh <laughs> Yeah, he would really funny. It would have been funnier if you would have just took a picture of him with some random Indian person. Well, there's, there's a guy that lives on the street where we went trucker training, which was my in-laws, and uh, and he's actually from um, India. So I, I was wondering if you saw him come out of uh, his house because they're category, and you see a big black man wearing. A, I mean, he had a ridiculous headdress. I mean, this dude went like all in. <laughs> I mean, it was freaking huge. I don't know how much he paid for it, but it couldn't have been cheap. I mean, he has a Mercedes and a Porsche driveway, so I don't think it sent him back too much. But, yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, he had a, he had a blast. He was he was a little shy, but uh, he got to taking the candy, putting it in his in his little bucket thing down pretty well. But uh, once he he trusted somebody to let him take the candy, he would like just literally like one time he just put his hands on the table and just started <laughs> pouring all the candy in. <laughs> like a like a dump like a you know, like a dump truck. Like he just he's like, oh all the candy for me. You um, right, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh but he, he had a blast and it was really fun to see him uh enjoy himself. But uh other than that, you know, just uh trying to readjust myself uh as, as far as sports wise we probably have a little bit of a shorter show than usual because uh well there's not just there's not as much going on right now and I, and I didn't get up on college football like i wanted to uh start doing yesterday because i had all this halloween stuff going on but uh baseball's ending auto racing is all but uh yeah, one left yeah, and uh, so no hockey, no basketball. Uh, not that anybody really cares about basketball. If you don't believe me, check the ratings. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do our best, though, and uh, we'll start out, as always, with our, our betting expert and uh, allegedly-ish uh, and our UFC expert, Mr. Pook Dog. What's going on, brother? How was, uh, how was the UFC Las Vegas fight card last night? Bro, I'm I'm definitely a betting expert if there's ever such a thing. But UFC expert? No, I don't think so. I mean, if you want to talk about maybe UFC's path, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts though right now. What's going on in the UFC? There's a lot of new up and coming fighters. The old roosters are dying, and they're making way for the for the new young ones. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of there's a lot of fighters. I have no idea what organization they were even fighting in prior to this. You know, there's a lot of but. But we did, however, however, that being said, we did have a great card yesterday. We had fighters that I actually knew who they were, actually. People that we've seen fight before. We had Bobby Green fighting. We had him fighting uh, Thiago uh, Moses. And we've both seen them guys fight before. And Bobby Green lost a close decision. Did any of you guys have a chance to catch the fight by any chance? I, I did not. I, uh, I, uh, I, was, I was swamped. And, had, and didn't really make that much of an effort uh, because I had 
Halloween stuff all day, and then and we, we did, did a it. show last night. We did an impromptu that's Halloween show right, last that, night. So that's fine. That's so fine. Just try to keep up with me. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> we yeah. can only try to ever keep up with you, but that's all we're ever right, trying we to do. We got Kevin Holland. Okay, Kevin. Kevin Holland. He is the next biggest thing. I know we talked about this guy before on on our show. I guarantee we have. He is the next biggest thing in the UFC, in my mind. He was just running through opponents. He ran through a guy last night, uh, Charlie Antav- Antavernos. Uh, a Spanish name. <laughs> you know, uh, Antaveros. Antaveros probably, uh, probably could spell it if I but have a tough time saying it. But he ran through that guy, you know. We also, we also had a chance to see. I know you guys are going to recognize this name. Who, guess who fought last night? Yes. You used to play football. Oh, uh, Greg Hardy? Guy used to play football. Who fought last night? Greg Hardy? Yeah, that's what I might guess. Bingo. Bingo. Man, he nice. put a whoop. He put, he put a, he put a freaking whooping on. He put a whooping on green last night. That, that, that uh, I'd hate to be his wife. <laughs> not Green's wife. I'm not calling Green a wife either. Oh, I'd hate to be. I'd hate to be Greg Hardy's wife. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm not sure how that comes about, but that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can go a lot of ways with that, Pook. But uh, good on you. Holy shit. <laughs> well, one way or another, if you're Greg Hardy's wife, you're definitely going to take a pounding. Oh God, dude! <laughs> so we, oh. had, we, had, we also had Anderson Spider Silva fighting. You know, as you know, Anderson Spider Silva, one of the UFC greats. You know, makes you wonder why this guy don't just retire. But I guess if you were cashing checks the way he is, you probably wouldn't retire either. Plus, the man has a giant ego. Um, I don't know this this fight. Well, go ahead. I would say, don't they all? Don't you kind of have to have a pretty big ego to be a, a cage fighter? That's part of it. Yeah, that's yeah, part of it. You, you know, I've, I've actually heard Joe, Joe Rogan say that um, you have to almost be damaged as a person. <laughs> you, really have to, you have to have something to prove. You have to have a reason. You have to have a reason. You're not going to count me out. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show the world. that ha- You have to have that kind of chip on your shoulder. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would think so. You know, it's an art, right? Mixed martial arts. And most well, artists man, that are man. great are a little bit um, uh, sixes and sevens. You know, you almost have to be a little bit, I think. More and more, more and more, though, we're getting better and better athletes all the time. Better and better athletes. Spider sure. was one of, the, one of the very first ones that was a great athlete that happened to be a great fighter. Your, Uriah Hall fought the Spider. And, yeah. um, to no better surprise, anyone that's anyone that's looking at the looking at the odds and making selecting plays and things of that nature, Uriah Hall won. He's a he's a pretty heavy favorite considering he was fighting one all time great. And it really looked it really looked like a a sparring session. And and before you kill me in the comments, what I mean by that is these guys were like pawing at one another, pawing at one another, pawing at one another every time, every time. Uh, Every time somebody, every, every once in a while, someone would get freaking cracked with a good shot. Every once in a while, someone would get cracked with a good shot. Third round rolls around. Anderson Silva gets lit up at the very end of the third round. Little ground and pound action. It looks like the fight might get stopped. Saved by the bell. They come out the fourth round. Same thing. They're just kind of like falling around with one another, falling around with another. A couple hard shots land. And uh, fourth round TKO. End of the end of the end of the fourth round, Uriah Hall just overcame him with uh, a nice shot to the head, landed. Nice shot to the head, landed. Nice right hand, landed to the head, put him on the canvas, and then from there is a little ground and pound. You know, rough seen enough. Bingo, it was over. Hey, did you uh, see who, who? Did you see who endorsed Trump? Oh yeah, I'm gonna play it at the end of the show. Oh yeah, okay. You, yeah. I thought that today just blew me away. <laughs> are you speaking of the guy? Are you speaking of the guy from Miami, the the fighter Basketball? from Miami? That was a while Basketball. ago. I'm talking about the promoter. Oh, Dana White. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, he's been. <laughs> he's, he's, been on, uh, he's been on. He talked about a while ago. Key. He's been. Yeah. He's been. Uh, he's been a Trump guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Trump helped get the UFC started. The 
Trump Taj Mahal was where they had a ton of their events when they were first starting. So, oh, really? Trump's okay. a big reason we have a UFC right now. <laughs> <laughs> But I saw that. I saw that. As I said, I had to make a comment because <laughs> I know you guys like Dana, and so that was neat. I, I have a love hate relationship with Dana White, absolutely. Yeah. And <laughs> as, as most MMA fans do, you know, as most MMA fans do. But he's he's the boss, you know. If 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 Dana White gets to be too much for me, there's other organizations I can watch. That yeah. being said, I love the product that he puts out there. I'm not so keen on some of uh, some of the deals that he's made in the past, as far as like. Um, I really sympathize with the fighters when it comes to some of the contractual things that have happened in the past, especially to deal with Reebok, but that's like water under the bridge. What's up, Michael Willard? How are you doing, brother? Thanks for joining yeah, me. How much longer is the Reebok deal got? Because they signed a new one with Venom, didn't they? So the Reebok deal's coming to an end. You're bringing me news, brother. Well, I heard, bringing- that, I, I heard, that, uh, I heard that like a month ago. That, As uh, I, you know what? Honestly, now now that you bring it up, I think maybe you're the one that said something about that on one yeah. of our shows. It might have been you. It might have been some other fucking head. But uh, yeah, I I guess you're right. But the same same same. I'm just saying. What I'm saying is when when you're only, okay, I I shouldn't say only because right when when you when you're getting paid like what let's say let's say a lot you get paid a lot like to fight like maybe twenty grand. Yeah. 30 grand as like one of the guys that isn't one of the guys, you know, but that's your paycheck for like four, five months. And then you got to pay a gym out of that. You got to pay trainers. You got to pay all kinds of people out of that. Money, you know what I mean? So a lot, of, a lot of the up and coming fighters were using the ads on their shorts to supplement their income to make, to in a lot of cases, make more money off of what was being printed on their shorts than what they were actually making from a purse. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, I miss, I miss the old advertisement days. I actually, <laughs> I like, there was like more individuality to it. No, I remember. That's, that's, the that's thing. another thing I liked about it. That's another thing I liked about it. these Reebok shorts are kind of pretty, they're pretty generic, you know? Yeah. Have- I, I seen the, uh, Venom, the Venom deal starts April, 2021. 20, so April is when, uh, Reebok loses their sponsorship deal with the UFC and it transfers to Venom. Hmm. Yeah, I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Which guys still make they, they they don't unless you're like the elite of the elite. You know, even the NFL has you know NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL. They all have minimum minimal salaries. You know, and and yeah. these guys are putting themselves out. You know, God, you know. 162 games a year. How many the NBA plays now? 16 games plus preseason. Like, you know, they have retirement funds and everything like that. And fighters, you're literally putting your brain at risk, your life at risk, and you're not getting really any return. In it. And that's probably, you know, one reason I don't like Dana White. It's very funny. I'm very anti-union in a lot of ways, except for sports. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about the union in sports. I don't know why that is, but it, but I am. I, I don't know, you know, I'm hypocrite just like every other person on the planet. Um, at least I, you know, I admit it like uh, most don't, but, um, well, yeah. Well, here's the thing, Minnie. I think what you, what you like is you like fairness. You don't like people sleeping in their trucks and getting paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It, it's just, yeah, I, I, I don't do. like it. It's the, you, you know, you're putting out an amazing product. You are the product and you're not getting your due, your due course. And, uh, you know, uh, I hate to sound like a socialist, but how much money do you fucking need, Dana? I mean, <laughs> I mean how much money do you need now? Seriously. Like, you know, I think there needs to be reforms in the UFC. It's a great product. There's no doubt. Like you said earlier, Pooh, it's a great damn product. Uh, there's awesome fights out there, gr- tremendous fighters, good stories. He's done a tremendous job. He's a hell of a promoter, apparently a very good businessman. But, uh, geez, like, you know – you're a guy who scraps for years and only get to the mid-level tier and you get done with it. And what do you have? Nothing. And you sacrificed, you know, 10 years of your life to, for a goal. He, has, he has a number of, of fighters under contract with him, right? Am I not correct um, in that? Oh yeah, of course. Oh, of so, course so, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot. So, so they, they, they've, they've got salaries and they've got retirement. There's no mm, doubt about that. Exactly. They get, they get, they get paid, uh, I'm not exactly sure how these how these contracts are structured, uh, 
But yeah, most of the money you make. Most of the money you make is performance based. You got knocked well, out of the night no, bonuses. Uh, believe it or not, that's the way the world works. Performance well, based. True. Uh, it, yeah, I it's mean, a very good point. But uh, like you know, you got a minimum salary. You know, drivers get a salary. No, they don't. They get paid by the mile. Uh, if they if they turn mild, they get paid. If they don't well, turn mild, they don't get paid. Yeah, well, I mean it's it, it's a performance based world out it's there. It's still there. Yeah, it, 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 it's 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 wild. <laughs> but uh, I I would be surprised if the guys that are on salary don't have something sitting back for retirement and so forth. I don't know. Well, Pookie, you need to look in that for us, man. I, I I can I can answer a lot of these questions right now. Uh, Chuck Waddell's broke. Um, there's a lot of guys that struggle with their finances. There's a lot of guys that didn't put stuff, put money away when the times are good. There's a lot of guys that never quite reached the level where you know. Let's put it this way, pops. You're you're right. It is all performance based, and you might get a contract. It might be for a large figure, but you're going to have to fight. Let's say four fights, right? You'll have you'll have to fight four fights within the next right. two years, whatever it is. Now this. The contracts might be structured a little bit different than what I'm saying, but it's very close to what I'm saying. So, so um, you will get, like he was talking about, you get, you will get bonuses for fire of the night, submission of the night, things of that nature. They can be a lot of money. They can be fifty thousand dollars in a lot of cases, right? That's what he normally gives out. He can give you a bonus just. Be, he's the he's the president, man. He he can give a guy a bonus. Let's say there was two fights that were running. Close first and second for fight of the night. He can give out two bonuses if he wants. He's Dana yeah. White, right? But you got a base there of what you're making, and you're 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 an independent contractor, and yeah. that's what you're showing up. the The basic agreement I know is pretty much they're going to pay for your medical bills. Yeah, but that's how it all was. The uh, I don't know how they're I don't know exactly how it is unless you get your own doctor. They're going to pay for your medical bills. They're going to give you so much to show up, and they're going to give you so much to win. And that's these contracts. These contracts are like um, four or five fights. So let's say you make a name for yourself on your third on your third uh, on your third fight in the UFC, right? Uh -huh. You still got two fights left on your contract. That's what that that can suck. Yeah. That I mean that can if you're the fighter that can suck because you got a lot of when you there's a, it's, Okay, there's a big difference between making the minor leagues and being a major leaguer, right? As far as money is concerned, right? Oh yeah, right. huge, huge, right? Oh okay. yeah. A lot of these, a lot of these guys are on the minor league bus going to the big show. If that makes any sense, I don't know what yeah. I'm exactly trying to say. They they got minor league salaries and minor league contracts, and they're at the big dance. Yeah. And that's what I think many has a problem with. And that's what, what a lot of fighters have a problem with. And something that really helped out the fighters prior to the Reebok deal was the fact they could slap advertising on their shorts and pay for uh, Muay Thai coats and pay for a gym to go, a, a yeah. gym to work out at and pay for, and pay for this and pay for that and have money to buy food without going to the, uh, you know, federal government for food stamps and things of that nature. You know, it, it made it just made it a lot harder on the fighters that Reebok deal in general, especially the fighters that were right below the top tier. Oh. But, but, when, but, but when a minor league guy on a minor league contract goes to a big fight, does is there not prize money? There's big money, big fight prize money. Um, this is what I'm. This is how I'm going to put it. Okay. Yeah. You're so happy just to get the UFC contract, right? Yeah. The, you'll sign the dotted line for almost any dollar amount. You, there's so many fighters. There's so many fighters and so many organizations now. Just to get in the UFC, you're, you're pretty much – it's like the old days when you get a record deal. You're, 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 just, you're just signing the paperwork. And I'm not saying that Dana White's not fair to his fighters overall. I'm just saying – that if you're below the top tier of fighter and you're in the UFC and you want to hire a Muay Thai coach and you want a gym to train at and you want to hire a jiu-jitsu coach and you want to hire – if you want all these advantages that the guys on the top level have, right? it's probably going to cost you your salary. You might end up going in the hole. 
<clears throat> is what I'm getting at. But yeah, right. <clears throat> that's well, I mean that that's just how it is. Well, okay, let's you make it past your first you make it past your first contract with the UFC. Now you have some leverage. Now you got some negotiating power. You got Bellator over here that is you know probably one rung below the UFC, and then and then you got one UFC or yeah one UFC that's over in Asia and yeah, probably, one FC. One FC, okay, my Wait, bad. One guess, FC. Guess one what? FC. What's we've, up? Got a, we've got a uh, uh, a special guest. There are eight very own HMFIC of the Vet Radio Syndicate. The uh, he is a United States Marine Corps veteran. He wrestled uh, for the Ohio State University, and he is Pook's favorite person in the whole oh world. Oh my goodness gracious! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. George Bartos, what's going on, man? Hey, welcome, hey, George. Hi, All right, I need to. So I'm listening to Pook, and you got some stuff right, and you got some things wrong. So let me. I'm listening. Uh, I'm all, I'm all ears because I know you know these guys personally. All right, so in the UFC right now, they've got about 475 fighters signed. Now, if they sign you a fight, it's usually three fights. So when Mark fought Stephen Bonner. Uh, this is Mark Coleman fought Stephen Barner, and and he fought Randy Couture. They signed him on a on a three fight fight. So one of my kids that um, was in the UFC is a kid named Anthony Lapsley. So when they signed him, he's he was twenty one and five, or um, well, he was a little bit if you include his amateur fights, pro fights, uh, and he was roughly about twenty one and five. They signed him on a, a on a card, on a UFC card. They'll put you on the preliminaries. Here's what the UFC will co will cover. They'll cover some of your expenses. Usually, if you go to Vegas, they'll, they'll put you up at the Palace Station. And the some of the fights they only pay you about fifteen thousand dollars if you're an under if you're an under uh, undercard, um, and it's not a lot of money. And so. Usually, when you fight out of a gym, okay, and, and let's let's take a look at uh, Mark Marinelli and, and Strong Style up in Cleveland. The gym is your trainer, manager, so you got to pay your agent, and that's usually five percent. Your you know your trainer, your agent, manager, and that's usually five percent. Your trainer is going to get 10, 15 percent of your um of your of your purse. Now, in the case of uh, Stipe, Stipe, when Mark went up there to help him, he was his wrestling coach. So it was Adam DeSabato. They got about four or five thousand dollars for helping him as a wrestling coach. Then you, but usually in a gym, what you're going to wind up having is you're going to have a Muay Thai coach, you're going to have a grappling coach, you're going to have a jujitsu coach, and you're going to have a hands coach. Sometimes. One one of those guys can do multiple things. You know that they can be able to. You know your boxing coach can can help your stand up your your Muay Thai. And one of the things with it is that the gym is getting exposure. So in a, in a place like Greg Jackson's gym, where he's got you know Jones and he's got he's had world class fighters, they make. The gym makes money because they're they're getting a percentage of the guys that they they manage. Um, it's in order to get to the top ten, like Matt Brown, um, who I trained with here in Columbus, um, they're paying him about you know give or take, and depending on the fights, a hundred, hundred fifty, two hundred thousand for the fight. But that's not a lot. I mean, when when you break it down, you got to you know you got to carry your own insurance. Um, you've got to carry, um, you got, you know, you got to manage your own taxes, you know, 1099 and all that. And by the end of the end of the year, it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of expenses that are taken up. The, the problem with Reebok when they signed the Reebok deal was Reebok isn't paying them. So Reebok, for example, Mark, and I, and I mean, you know, this is, you know, stuff that it's, it's. You know, now it's under the butt, under the bridge, water underneath the bridge. But when he, if you take a look at Mark Coleman, one of the fights he had was um, he wore Hollywood jeans as a sponsor on his on his on his fight trunks. That paid him five thousand dollars. Reebok 
doesn't have anything close to that. They gave you, uh, <coughs> sorry about that. Um, they give you gear and equipment. So they give you shorts, they give you warm ups, they give you equipment. Uh, and it, it's not a very good deal for them. So a lot of these fighters are struggling. And this is why, you know, 1FC and, uh, you know, Bellator. Bellator and some of these other ones are picking up a lot of good talent because, you know, the UFC is going to be, I don't know, what, what, you know, whatever you want to, uh, uh, let's say it's the NFL. Um, and all the the rest of them were the USFL, but they're slowly a lot of them. Um, when they bought Pride, people were making more money in Pride than they were at the UFC, and then the <laughs> UFC. What? That's just that's the, you know, the point I was getting at, George, was that you know it, 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 they're putting out a great product, they've got great fighters, but you know they're getting paid minor league salaries to put out uh, you know the show type. Events, you know, they're they're, they're yeah. minor league salaries, but I'll show time, big time show events, and and that just seems kind of shitty to me. And, and you know, you brought up the great point. Pook brought up initially, and you confirmed it. Is you know, the guys are in other series are making more money because they can individualize their advertising on their fight trunks or you know whatever they choose to wear, and and that just seems like Dana White being a uh, I don't know. I, I just I like well, his. Product. I don't like the guy. The thing well, you do with Dana White. The thing you see with Dana White is that he's televising all these events. Yeah. And that kind of money to televise these events. And speaking he's not of fighting, getting money to do it. One time. So, <laughs> speaking of fighting, know. Jade said that there's a fight going on right now in the Broncos Chargers game. Oh, no. Nice. a fight going on in the field. Uh, <laughs> they're going to tie, tie Chicago and New Orleans. It's tied 23 each, and they're going overtime. Oh, but one, no. of the things, but one of the things you also got to remember, too, Pook, and, and it's the same thing that many. And and Pops has brought up before. How many? It, it, you know, let's be realistic about this. How many NASCAR drivers could you, are in existence that could that could qualify a car in Talladega? Yeah. How many? Huh. Well, you probably got. I, I mean, let's say all in in the United States, you have. You 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 say you want to open up the the Kremering, uh race crew, and yeah. you've got you just won fifty million dollars or a hundred million dollars in the lotto. You said, "Hey, I want to run NASCAR. I got enough money to do it." How many drivers do you think are available in the United States that could qualify? Clara, uh, you know, let's say Darlington at uh, you know at Talladega. There's not yeah. that many, yeah. and so well, there may be sixty guys. Board. That's what I was about to say. I was going to say 60, 70 guys. Yeah. Well, that you, you, get, you can pick from that can actually do it. But now how many can win? Right. Eight or nine. Yeah. And so if you go to the UFC, there's 10 to 15 guys in a weight class that can actually be competitive. Right. Um, and, and so the problem is that everybody thinks, you know, that, oh, my God, you know, why aren't they just signing? Why don't they go get talent? Why don't they go get, you know, um, you know, why don't they get this guy or why don't they go get the, this guy? It's not that easy. I mean, if you don't have a, a, a wrestling background, if you don't have an MMA, you know, if you don't have a, 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 a pedigree where you can step in there and, and be competitive, there's just not that many guys. I mean, Kevin Jackson is the prime example. Gold medalist, wins a gold medal, gets in the UFC, um, takes on Frank Shamrock, um, and get submitted in under a minute. Just, <laughs> uh, you know, so, and, and we're not talking about, yeah. we're not, ta we're talking about an Olympic gold medals. We're not talking about, you know, um, I got, Joe, you know. Uh, Joe Blow, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, it's, you know, that was, was so interesting about the UFC in the early days because they were really shaking up uh, the martial arts world because they were really figuring out what actually works in a fight. And, you know, everybody was coming in with, with different styles. And, God, there was Tai Chi dudes coming out there. You can't take me off if I have my chi center. <laughs> oh, yeah? Here comes Dan well, Henderson well, with the right. <laughs> Boom! Here comes Hoist Grace with, with an arm bar or, or, you know, a rear naked choke. I mean, like, <clears throat> in, 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 it's a perfect example. That some of the early days, Hoist Gracie was fighting a lot of strikers, stand-up guys, and getting the just breaks beat well, off yeah. of them. And then all of a sudden... Oop, 
fight over. Hoist Gracie puts him in an arm bar, or oh. <laughs> it's, or he'll, or he'll but, hook somebody, and, sure, and sure. also it's jujitsu now, and now no, jujitsu is not enough. You got to have striking, so you got to get Muay Thai, and you know we talk about this every almost every single on the sports church about well, you yeah, know, what right. you need to you gotta do. Have, you got to have a, you got to have a mixed. You, you gotta yeah, have mixed a mixed martial arts, baby. You gotta have jujitsu, Muay Thai. You've got to have boxing. And here, here's, the, 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 here's the crazy part that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a, a prime example. You don't have you don't have that many coaches out there. You you, you think you, you, you want to talk about fighters? There's some uh, shitty coaches. No, no, no! It's not that they're shitty coaches. No, no, there, there are. Look at the guy that's coaching Diego Sanchez. That guy's no, a no, freaking no. man. I, I agree with that, but I'm saying, I, I'm saying, poop. There's not that many guys out there that can coach. There, there's, and I'll give you a prime example. And I hate, you know, I mean, I'm going to use me as an example. When I was coaching at Ohio State, there, I was one of four coaches. There was 86 Division One programs, wrestling programs in the U.S. That was it, 86. So there's only 350 Division One coaches that were all in in the United States. And that's assistant and full, you know, full time assistants, full, you know, head coaches or 86 head coaches and another, you know, 250, 270 assistant coaches. You get to that level, it's it's not that easy. It's it's like the same thing. I, I'll, you know, I'm going to use Pops for a second. How many. Guys in the U.S. right now, um, you take away, you know, however much money you, you, you know, you got to go spend that they could set up a car to run at NASCAR, to run at Darlington or could run set up a, a, um, a you know, Penske Motorsports, yeah. the, um, you, the, the guys that have um, city, you know, the guys that run. Um, What's what's the one that's out of Charlotte? Well, all of them in NASCAR. But, <laughs> but no, I get your point. I think what you're trying to ask is how many guys could could can actually set up and run a racing team successfully in the United States. Like, and, and so it's the same thing with I've I've worked out and I've helped fifteen of my guys that I've helped have been in the UFC that I've trained with. You know, they've been you know with you know through Ohio State through Hammer House and all that have been in the UFC. We've had probably another forty or fifty that are below, you know, that have fought in in you know King of the Cage and and the the same kind of fight. There's not that many coaches that have the ability to you know to teach, you know, to to be able to teach you how to be a full fighter. Yeah. And, and so the the problem is with. The one thing that's also happened with Dana White has been since they sold the UFC, they have stockholders now. And one of them is Tom Brady, the fucking Antichrist. Um, <laughs> um, I knew that was coming. <laughs> so um, they have to, you know, when they sold the UFC and they've had, you know, they, they sold it at the right time. Um, they, they're they having to produce money um, to you know, they're having to get a return on investment to all their, you know, all the people that bought in. So it, you, you put that on top of there, they're treating the guys in the UFC like shit with the exception of the 10 stars that are, you know, legitimate stars. But even now, you know, you just lost Khabib, you lost Connor. Who do you have that's a, who, who would you put as the number one UFC star? John Bones Jones. That's about it's it. All got, man, and, and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't like the guy, but I'd have to say the the, the leprechaun over there. The little fruit cake. Oh yeah, Conor yeah, McGregor. That, that guy with the proper glove and all that. Uh, the whiskey guy. Yeah, but he's yeah. not he's not coming back to the UFC. Probably. Well, he he's may gonna, now. He yeah, may be reaching out because he's losing guys left and right. Uh, so this could be too. You know, whole bunch. Of They'll give him the fight. He's gonna yeah. Fight. Um, I, I mean, that's my opinion. That, that's my opinion. I don't really want. Hey. Today I'm I today I'm agree I'm doing nothing but agreeing with you, all right? Okay, HMF IC I'm doing nothing but agreeing with no, you. No, but I'm saying Pookie. Maybe, poop. Here's the thing I, I might have said some things weren't quite factual, but you know it was how things were explained to me. But basically what I'm saying is if you take the guys on the top tier, right? You take the right. guys on the top tier, and you take the guys that are still locked in 
for fighting contract that are up-and-coming fighters that just now breached the top 10. The disparity in the income. And, and, and guys used to be able to supplement their income with the, with the sponsorship on their shorts. That's all I was, that's all I was, and then that's all, that's all I was getting to. I would have liked to have gotten to the fact that uh, Dana White does have uh, people that want dividends, that that, that 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 organization was bought for a shit pot full of money, more like a container full of money, <laughs> freaking shipping containers full of money, if you were to palletize the money. Just imagine like a sh shipping container after shipping container after shipping container, right? So they, they have, like you said, they have to show a profit. They have to show a profit, and um, and that's why they were, that's why they they were pushing these fights out during the pandemic. We all know that. But yeah. I have nothing. But I, you are the MMA insider. You actually train fighters. He's got a role. He owns a roll cage. He's got a cage to roll in. Do I have a cage to roll? You know what I roll in? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is the my own neighborhood I grew up in. That's where you know he's got his own roll cage set up. He's been part of Hammer House. I mean, you're, you're the MMA insider here. And, and Pook, they, but the other thing is that, too, is that people also, you know, you this is something that, that you need to educate the people that are watching the UFC and saying, hey, listen, why don't we have this guy? Well, he's not that good. Um, you take a look at, at, you know, you take a look at who, who has dropped off at heavyweight, right? If you take a look, Alistair Overeem has been fighting 15 years in his fifth. He's ranked number fifth right now. After you go to, you know, you, you have Stipe, uh, I mean, you have Miosic at number one. Then you have Francis Nagano and Curtis Blades are two and three. And try to name somebody on, on, on that list after him. <laughs> Right, yeah. and, and, and you go, there are guys that have been knocked out, and we've seen them get knocked out. Like the Black Beauty comes to mind right off the top of my head, or or, or um, or 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 the Junior uh, Dos Anjos. Yeah, yeah. been knocked out. All these guys have been knocked out. They've been picked off by. They've been and and even Alex Rowling, like you say, Alex Rowling has been all these. You know, it's, it's, the, the heavyweight division's been hurting the UFC for a long, long time. And here's yeah. one of the things I want to. Uh, here's one of the things I want to bring up that that you that uh, um, that you can't. Uh, what you call it? That, that I don't think you're you're taking into account. One of the things that that happens, especially in the UFC and, and especially with fighters, right? This this is a dynamic to to fighters more than anything else, and it happens to boxers. It happens to they fall into a, a what, what they call a, 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 an operational pace trap. So if you take a look at, at what, one of the things that's important in a fight, in a box, in, let's say, let's just use boxing where people are a little bit more familiar with it. You have what's called a, a punch count. Now, the, all, the, the average Walter weight, middle weight punch count is 791 punches per boxing match. So if you're 155 pounds, um, you know, in, in that weight range class, from 147 to 160, the average boxing match, 12 rounds, is 100, 791 punches. That's your operational pace. Now, think about that for a second. You're throwing a hell of a lot of, you know, that, you know, that averages to about 60, you know, punches a round. Go to the heavyweights, it's a lot less. But one of the things that happens in MMA is fighters always create patterns. The, it, it's very hard to change a fighter who, if he's got a hole in his in his defense or he's got a hole in his offense or you know there's something not there, um, he's going to wind up getting exposed badly. Prime example is Ronda Rousey when they they paired her up and she got knocked out no one took a, a the no one took the time to say hmm you got a world class kickboxer that's had 30 fights um, maybe this isn't the fight for her and it exposed the hole in her in Ronda Rousey's you know offense that if you can't get if she can't take you down she doesn't have the hands to beat you right holly holm just decimated her with what with leg kicks 
and just went, you know, straight, you know, yeah, straight punches and said, okay, listen, we're not, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to stuff your takedowns and we're going to be on our feet. I'm, I'm going to have a good enough defense. I'm going to keep my hips in, pressure you in. You're not going to take me down and then expose that. Here's the, here's what happens next though. If you, if you're Ronda's trainer, you have to say, Hey, listen, we got to come up with a different, uh, a different plan because this isn't going to work. Very few people are capable of turning that corner and saying, okay, we need to recreate your style to be effective. And that's what happened with Ronda. That's what's happened with a, a few other fighters. And if you, as a coach, it's hard to do that because people are, you know, they, they're used to being comfortable and fighters always have a pattern. That's why Khabib is so good. He's changed his, one of the things that Khabib has done is he has changed his pattern to, to go after certain opponents. He's been able to throw hands. He's been able to go on the mat. He's been able to submit people and all because he, works on whatever the hole in his, his offense or defense is. And that's, that is also something you don't bring up. Right. Hey, Pook, this, 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 this is, well, this is definitely something I, I want, I want to bring up when it comes to B, right. And, um, and, and I like have a, I, I actually do have a UFC insider. I actually do have a coach on a wrestling coach. So it's a great, great thing to ask him. Right. And um, I'm not, I'm not going to argue that, that there's holes in, my uh, UFC top game because I'm not on the inside like you are, you know, you know what I mean? So that, that's how, it, that's just how it is. I'm a fan. I, you're getting a fan's perspective. Uh, at one time I was a real sick fan. Now, not as much, but I'm still a fan. The thing I want to ask you, it seems like, like, like you were talking about now, Khabib has stood with some people, but Khabib has had trouble standing with certain people at certain times. Right. Right. We, we've all seen that. Right. He did a pretty damn good job in his last fight, but it seems like, he always presses you up against the cage, right? You know what he's going to do when he presses you up against the cage, right? Right. Right. And then you know what he's going to do. He's going to get – now Now once he gets you sitting on your ass, he's going to get that leg lock on you. He's going to get like a leg lock. He's going to what, – what do you call him? And, and, and he like – Throw the boots in. He's going to throw the boots in. He's going to throw the boots in. He's going to throw the boots in. And then he – and then he'll, grab, he'll get control of your wrist. And he, he's – is able to do it at every single fighter. I haven't seen anyone that was able to stop him from pressing him up yet. That was able to stop him completely from pressing. Now, some guys slowed him down, like Ally Quinta slowed him down, right? But right. I haven't seen a guy yet that was able to stop him from pressing you up against the cage, sitting you on your ass, taking his leg, wrapping him around yours, locking, putting a lock on your leg. Holding you by getting a hold of one wrist, so you're you're so he's across your body. So now, what are you going to do? You, I mean, a lot of these good wrestlers are are able to are able after they fight and fight and fight and fight, and after taking some damage to get back to their feet, but they're still pressed up against the cage. I mean, he's a hell of a. How do you stop that? That's the question. How would anyone have went about stopping that? What would you have done if you were coaching one of these fighters that went up against Khabib? Well, I would tell him to. I, I would. Here's the thing that I would have him do is that I would have him jab him to death. I would have him press the, you know, I would have him press, um, punching him because Khabib doesn't like to get Khabib doesn't like to get um, punched, and that's one of the things that. Uh, he does. <laughs> well, yeah. no, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> you know, Jake, you don't seem to mind it. Dan Henderson, maybe I don't know. Dan Henderson, Dan Henderson. Yeah. Let me let me give you a prime example. Somebody doesn't like Joe Frazier, uh, right? <laughs> yeah. You okay. know Frazier. You know Frazier was was willing to take one or two punches to get one of his off. Yeah. And yeah. and that you know so Khabib doesn't like to get jabbed. So if I have to fight against Khabib, I am going to I'm going to push the action. To not let him get set up, I'm going to have to jab him. I'm going to have to take shots, shots at him when you know I'm going to inside leg kick him, so he doesn't get you know, so he does not get set up. He can't get his offense set up. The minute he steps his left foot forward, I'm going to kick his shin. I'm going to kick his calves. Um, I'm going to go frustrate him till he makes a mistake, and I it opens up a hole that for me. So. 
if if you are going to go after you go after somebody, you pressure in on them. It, it'd be difficult. And then when he gets you up against the, um, you know, you, you got to do the same thing that you do to, you know, you're you're talking about um, Chuck Liddell um, when you know when he him and Randy fought um, when he presses you into the ring, you hold on and you turn in on him and not let him get set up. Now that's difficult. And you got to have your guy in shape. But it, one of the things is that the minute you get punched in the mouth or you get taken down, your your whole game plan has got to go out. Sometimes goes out the window. All right, we got to move on because we spent fifty minutes. Real, real quick before we move on, all right, we had, we had thirty fucking seconds. Hey, you the insider on the show, sir. <laughs> We don't have enough to talk about. Well, we're talking. What do we? What do you want? <laughs> well, we've got other things to cover. I'm, no, that was uh, that was here. That here and that was my point. Like I thought, that's what Gage was good. Gage, I thought Gage would be able to execute a game plan similar to the one you're speaking of. And, right, and right. Gage is coming in there with a pretty good wrestling pedigree, from what I understand. I don't know, man. I, I mean. I mean, obviously the guy's not superhuman. Well, but- you got you to gotta execute, though. I mean, hey, look, Joe Frazier had a good – I'm sure he had a good plan against Ali, but it didn't work. Well, he did on the first – I'm sure the Buffalo did. Bills in the 90s had a lot of good plans going up against the teams <laughs> that did the Super Bowl. That didn't work out well for them either, did it? That's you got to execute. You can have the greatest plan fair. in the world, but if you don't execute, you don't execute, you don't win. You don't score until you score from whatever movie that's from. Maybe American <laughs> Pie. I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, look, uh, we, 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 you know, I, I was rooting for Justin Gagey. It didn't happen. I'm sure he had a great plan to go to beat Khabib, and I'm sure his coaches it and his like trainers had a great plan. plan. Me, it, didn't work. it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't to work. me, it looked like the plan was running around the ring and not getting taken down. Yeah, yeah. That looked well, like the whole plan. That looked like the plan looked like he he was like like the way Mayweather will run away from fighters and not get hit. And, yeah. and pick you apart. It looked like Gage's whole plan was running away from Khabib and not getting taken down to me. Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, great if you run around, but you got to tag the dude, and he, he wasn't tagging him. So, hence the plan fell apart. He didn't execute the whole plan. So, all right, final thoughts on the UFC because we've got some racing, probably about 30 seconds in NHL, a little bit of uh, <laughs> NFL, a little bit of MLB, and uh, yeah. So, hey, final thought is everybody's got a plan. Um, Everybody's got a plan to get punched in the mouth. So, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and when you're out drinking in a bar, the the worst possible thing you can do is go pick on that old guy with fucking cauliflower ears. <laughs> Actually, I had a question for I had a question for George too, but uh, I guess we're kind of out of time. No, you can ask. But, what the go hell? Ahead, go ahead. All right. Go so ahead. you so you coached uh, at Ohio State. Um. Uh. Which of because Big Ten's got some legendary wrestling coaches. Who do you think would have been the best uh, wrestling coach from uh, back in the heyday to uh, take over as a UFC um, wrestling coach? Dan Gable, Jay Robinson, uh, Barry Davis, Jim Jordan, somebody else. If you're talking about the kind of, I I, I will tell you this: if you if you're talking about a style of wrestling that is that would be better for um, the UFC, um, I, it'd either be Russ Ellickson or Jay Robinson because they have three Hall of Famers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was just kind of yeah. wondering, yeah, Jay Robinson, I know he had those intense camps too. A lot of guys I knew went to those when we were younger. I just, well, I you got to remember, uh, you know, one thing about Jay Robinson, and I don't know if you know this or not, uh, but Jay Robinson was Ranger. Nice. I just wish Jim Jordan would, uh, you know, uh, uh, power slam uh, Jerry Nando <laughs> just one time. <laughs> hey, I, I, I am sure he's really thought about that. Oh, I bet he has. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, Pops, what you got for us on uh, auto racing? I know, uh, I know the season is going to be I'm going to sign, hey, sign off. Thank you guys for your having hey, me thanks, Hey, thanks. George, really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for coming on, on George. Yeah. You did a good job. Appreciate it. Um, the amazing thing is is that uh, the guy that won the the regular season championship is not in the championships. Uh, Kevin Harvick 
uh, dominated the series this year, and he just got eliminated from the top four. So, uh, uh, the silly season. Well, see, you know, this is the thing. NASCAR back before the Kenta deal, the 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 real emphasis was on participation. You had to participate in every race in order to, to uh, win the championship. It wasn't on winning. And so Kenta goes ahead and wins the championship without winning a race. Uh, and so they change it to this, this, this system we got now where we get playoffs. Now you got a guy that just dominated the series all year and he is not, he doesn't have a chance of being a champion. And that, that's, that, that, that's absolutely crazy. So it, it, it's nuts. Uh, <laughs> it, it really is a shame to see. You got you got two former champions in there uh, that will have a, a shot at the championship, but it, it is just I don't know. Uh, it came down to Harvick needed to get one more pass in in order to uh, to uh, make it into the championships, and uh, he only had six laps to do it, and it didn't work out real well. <laughs> he uh, he ended up spinning out Kyle Busch at the start finish line. Kyle got across the start finish line, and uh, everybody passed uh, Harvick. So. Harvick finished like 12th instead of, instead of like 6th. And so he, he was out of the championship because he couldn't pass Kyle Busch. And that that really gets my goat. But uh, that that's what NASCAR is today. Chase Elliott uh, had to win the race in order to, to get into the Final Four. And he did win the race today. Um, there's some real neat stories about uh, uh, Chase Elliott. Uh, and, and it comes about by Kyle Larson. They were doing a uh, interview with uh, Larson. It was Tony Stewart interviewing Kyle Larson, and uh, talked about, "Well, are you going to be able to do any of your dirt track racing?" And he, he says, uh, "Mr. Hendrick said uh, you got you got to be smart about it, uh, and if you screw up, it's on you. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you get hurt, your salary stops." Uh, and I, I think that makes sense, but that's not going to stop him. The other thing we found out is that Chase Elliott wants to race. <laughs> and so he he, uh, he wants to do some dirt tracking. So uh, we got more guys that are going to be involved. So it's, it's going to be neat to see uh, what, what comes out of there. Uh, uh, Kyle is is got his really good setup with, with the Hendrick Stables. Uh, and, and to be honest with you, he's got a chance to be it. A champion, probably not this year. Uh, it's really, really, really hard uh, to win a championship your first year with a team. Uh, but he's got a good team. He's got good equipment, uh, and, and uh, you never know. Uh, he he's got the, the the desire to do it. That that's uh, the thing you, you need to do. Oh, he's and, a man uh, on a mission. He's got to. Yeah, he's a man uh, on a mission now. I mean, that dude the, is really pissed off. The dude has won over fifty percent of the races he's done outside of NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and, and that's they're talking World Outlaws. You're talking uh, USAC Sprints. You're talking USAC Midgets, uh, and, and even a dirt dirt car, uh, a a dirt stock car. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, and, and he won his second race. So, <laughs> yeah, I encourage anybody. You, you, all you gotta do is get on Google, look up your local dirt track. I mean, race season is over, but come spring they'll start back up. And if you've never been to a dirt track race. You got to go. They're awesome. They're super fun. Especially take, if, take goggles, though. Do take goggles. Well, if, the tr if, it's, if, if it's been wet lately and the, and the track is moist, yes, definitely take goggles, especially well, for your young ones because you, you're going to take a few uh, few clumps well, of clay in the head. You get, if, you, if, if it's wet, you get clops coming at you. If, if it's dry, you get dust. Yes. And, and yeah. So you want goggles no matter what. And yes. <laughs> I, I, I can't wait to take James to his first dirt track race. I think he's going to lose his mind. I think he's just going to lose it because he loves watching <laughs> sports. Um, I, but I don't watch a lot of racing with him. I don't think I've ever watched any racing with him because it's usually on when he's taking a nap. But uh, I, I can't wait to take him to his first race. I mean, he, he's going to lose his mind. I mean, he's going to have head bones and whatnot, but, uh, you know, to kill some of the yeah, noise. The, the, the bad thing is that we don't have uh, ESPN Thunder. Mm. That, that was – Really awesome short track racing, yeah. Uh, uh, and it it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did a couple of, of uh, midget shows at Hales Corner Speedway, yes. and that was fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was also and, very uh, terrifying being an eight year old kid, kid holding the camera while your dad is on air talking to Larry Newber <laughs> and, and uh, the, uh, Bob Jenkins. And you're up there on this rickety thing, like forty feet up in the air. You're eight years old. You're holding on this camera for your dear life. You know. Um, 
Yes, for, for those who haven't heard it before, I was my dad's pack mule. And I'm very happy to do it because I, I absolutely <laughs> adored – my dad adored racing. So, of course, I love my dad and I adored, I adored you know, going to the races and seeing him, uh, you know. And the one time he didn't let me carry a piece of equipment, he ended up in the hospital. <laughs> he dropped a 40-pound recorder on his finger and cut it all the way down to the tendon. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, it, it didn't bother me until I really got a chance to look at it, and that, that, that <laughs> turned white. <laughs> oh wow! But anyway, uh, that that was wild. Uh, it, it, it it it's interesting to see how this this all comes out this year. Uh, the fact that uh, she, uh, that uh, Lewis Hamilton is is saying, "Hey, I, you know, I'm going to race next year. It just might not be Formula One." That is kind of freaky too, but. Lewis is Lewis. I don't think he's looking to do anything else. I just think he's trying to let uh, Mercedes know, hey, we got some issues to get to cover. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but, I mean, I don't know that you can compare Lewis uh, with anybody else uh, because it, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game. But, uh, I mean, the, the Mercedes car has been just so dominant. It's outrageous. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and Total Wolf was looking at replacing himself. So, uh, you know, he runs Mercedes and he owns part of the Mercedes team. So he's trying to figure out who's going to replace him. He wants to go to a chairman of the board or, a, a, I don't know, president company or something like that. He wants to be there to, to stay around, but he doesn't want to stifle anybody from moving up into his rank. So uh, that that part will be interesting to see how that, how that goes in the future. And I, that may have a part, may play a part in Hamilton's uh, – negotiations yeah. he may he may want to say and who who come, becomes the boss because that that that, that is lewis he, <laughs> he he gets his hands on a lot of stuff yeah well and i mean you know when you're the when you're the goat yeah you can do that you know i mean so <laughs> good luck i mean i don't know you're making 25 30 million dollars a year you can make more i mean I, I guess you're worth what your people are willing to pay you so Oh, I'd be willing to bet he's got at least half of that coming in endorsement. So he's making $45 million a year. So. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he's quite the character. He really is. Uh, and he, he doesn't mind saying what he – now, I I don't agree with all the stuff he does <laughs> and yeah. all the stuff he says. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he is, he is the champion, and, and uh, he, he's got a, he's got a, a uh, platform to speak on, and uh, he, he doesn't have to do it. It, uh, yep. It'll be nice to see how how this all comes out. I'm sure he will be back with uh, Mercedes next year, but yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be some ne the negotiation. That's all there's gonna be to it. For sure, for sure. Uh, anything else you got on uh, auto racing? I mean, no, I, think, uh, I think we pretty much got it down to uh, down to the final four, and that's uh, gonna be Phoenix next week. So cool. we'll have to wait and see how that comes out. Who are you who are you taking? Um. <laughs> you know that that's funny because you you've got two former champions in there. Let me let me bring it up and, and so I can, I can set this up um, because you you've got some former champions, um, and you got two guys that I mean have not not ever been in it. Uh, Chase Elliott uh, has never been in. This is his first time in the championships, uh, and, and you got Joey Logano. And Kozlowski, uh, so it it it, it it's going to be interesting to see who 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 does what. Uh, I I probably, to be honest with you, <laughs> I I just think Chase Elliott's got so much momentum, and Harvick being out of it, uh, he's probably got the best shot of him. Um, the the eleven car has uh, has you know, for one reason or another, he can't. He can't win a championship, and I don't understand that. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see how it comes out. Wouldn't be beautiful if Kevin Harvick wins next week? Oh, I'm sure he will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he, he'll, he'll be that mad. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. And Tony Stewart will be that mad. Oh, and Tony Stewart has got a lady. I forgot to say that. Finally. Well, no, not finally. He was well, engaged well, once before. But oh, that that's out. right. I forget about that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but now he's he's uh he's, he's made a Facebook that, official uh, <laughs> uh, drives for Don Schumacher and the uh, uh, oh yeah she's an NHR NHRA uh, uh, top fuel driver yeah 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 yep yep, yep. Uh, and uh, they apparently uh, 
sequestered themselves <laughs> to get out of the uh, <laughs> the COVID deal uh, ah. together. So <laughs> well, that, that must have sucked for Tony. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. But, uh, um. They they were out in Utah and uh, doing some some dune buggy riding, and it was <laughs> it was wild. They both turned the thing over. Oh, so I'm they're, sure. They're, yeah. they're even. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, off the wall question. Are they still doing or are they going to continue to do, uh, you know, the, the Mobile One Challenge where, where they had two Mobile uh, One sponsored drivers race each other's cars uh, on the track? Remember, we've seen Jeff Gordon do it. And, and, uh, and uh, God, I can't remember the guy. He was one of my favorite IndyCar drivers ever. Uh, and for, or Formula One drivers where he went through the first turn at Indy uh, on the road course and went straight through the. Oh. <laughs> uh, Tony raced Lewis Hamilton's car. Watkins Glen and Lewis raced Tony uh, yeah. Tony's car. I, mean, I think they. I think they do. Well, I, should, I shouldn't say that because they do have that that one competition. It's not Mobile One anymore, um, but they bring drivers from all all different. Uh, I don't know from all different aspects of racing, and they they let them drive. A, a dune buggy, uh, a somewhat stock car, and, and I think, and, and then an open wheel car, uh, and and they race inside a coliseum. Uh, so that that is out there, and uh, it's been somewhat successful, but it, it it relies on on television ratings and, and money yeah. for for that. So there's not a lot of big money in it, but the, the drivers are participating. Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd like to see more of that and, and more. I mean, I think that's, you know, they, they, not so much a worldwide of sports type of thing, but I would love to, I guess, kind of like that. I would, I would love to see more drivers, especially in the off season, racing rally or, you know, and, and taking their shot at rally or rally guy taking a shot at an yeah, Indy car or taking, you know. I, well, one, they're, they're going to have a all-star type of deal next year that, uh, excuse me, Tony Stewart's involved in. Uh, where they they provide the cars, it's going to be very simpler to uh, to IROC. Okay. Uh, and and uh, the, the the drivers are, are brought in to compete. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they get identical prepared cars, and off they go. Nice. Uh, so that so that that will be fun because I enjoyed the heck out of IROC. Oh yeah. It, it just got it just so got ungodly expensive for the for the for the producer. Because sure. they kept crashing the cars. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. The worst one, the worst one was uh, uh, the uh, past masters. Was the uh, they were racing Jaguar sedans? I don't know what what Jaguar it was, but it, it was a, uh, a probably about a hundred twenty thousand dollar car, and they were racing around uh, Raceway Park in Indianapolis, <laughs> and and. Uh, I mean, the, the number of times that they didn't make it out of turn one, <laughs> no. it, was, it was amazing. Uh, but anyway, uh, that, that that was fun. And that was all past masters. It was all former NASCAR drivers, retired guys uh, in racing. So, I mean, it was David Hobbs. It was, it was uh, I don't know. It was just all the old guys. Yeah. And uh, it, it was fun, but... It, it cost them a bunch of money <laughs> and, and it, it, it didn't come back the next year. All right. Uh, T what you got for us in NHL news? Uh, the main story in the NHL right now actually revolves around a fourth round draft pick uh, from the Arizona Coyotes. They ended up letting him go <clears throat> for something that happened four years ago. Um, Mitch Miller was drafted in the fourth round by the Arizona Coyotes. Um, before the draft, he wrote an apology letter to all the NHL teams uh, for an event that happened four years ago where he and another boy in school um, took a sucker, uh, ran it, wiped it down in a urinal, and had a uh, developmentally disabled uh, oh, black, uh, developmentally, de developmentally disabled black schoolmate. Uh, eat the sucker that went through the urinal. Um, the <laughs> other boy. Oh my god! Yeah, the other boy involved in this uh, personally apologized to the uh, the kid that they did this to and to his family. Uh, Mitch Miller, however, did not. Um, the parents said they did forgive the other boy that uh, apologized. 
Um, well, yeah, it came out that this stuff happened four years ago. Um, and uh, the NHL uh, diversity uh, committee or whatever that group that they that they set up, um, they attacked this uh, right away. And the Coyotes ended up just uh, signing off their rights to this player they had drafted. And then oh. following suit after that, uh, the University of North Dakota, where he was set to have his freshman year on the team, uh, they also cut him from their hockey program. So he lost his college career and his uh, oh my possible God. NHL career for something he did when he was 13 or 14 years old. Yeah, so, um, you know, what, like he did, what, he, what he did was fucking but, absolutely yeah, despicable. What he, but did his, was, he deserves to lose his livelihood and his chance of a livelihood because of it. Like, uh, was there a crime committed? I don't know. Like, I don't know yeah. if there's a, a crime of that. I guess maybe it might, you might construe it as assault, but, I mean, I don't holy know shit. the way to attack that. I mean, I mean, yeah, definitely a crime was committed there, but um, but how old was he when he did this? 13. Uh, like, 13 All or right. 14, because he's... Right, what if we held like everything that you did when he was drafted? Yeah. What if we held everything that you did when you were 13 years old against you? Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's what I'm saying. That's, you know, it's the thing about cancel culture. And here we go in politics yeah. on sports church, but it's cancel culture. You did something stupid back in the day. You don't deserve to earn a living. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's dive into your background. Let's go through your Twitter feed. You, I, I just, it's just well, unbelievable. And, yeah, this, is, this is something that should have been addressed, you know, four years ago when it happened. He should have lost the year of playing hockey that year instead of now, you know, he built up his career and he gets drafted by an NHL team. And then it's like, well, karma catches up to you in the end. So who I knows? Guess. Maybe eventually there'll be a college that'll pick him up. He is a talented enough player that he's played three times on the U.S. national team. <clears throat> so there might be another college out there that'll want to pick him up. Um and then maybe in future years he'll get drafted in the NHL at some point. But um, let's hope, let's hope, you know, hopefully, he I mean, with if, it, you want, but... if you want this shit to go away, the first thing he's got to do is get with the family of that kid that he did this shit with and actually apologize to them because it seems that that seems to be the big area contention of the family of the victim in this. That uh, you know, you know, the one guy came and actually apologized about it, and the other. You know, this guy's kind of just gone on and what is you know, like yeah, and maybe he should do that. And you know, maybe I should go back to one of my friends in middle school and uh, who, when we broke into the high school uh, after hours and we're being really crazy kids, and he pissed on my leg. Maybe I should cancel his ability to make a fucking living. <laughs> you yeah, know, because yeah, that's you right. Got, you know, that's fair, right? I mean, you know, that's how the world works now. Cool. You know, you gotta let that go. Yes, you, you, gotta, you, you have to let it go. Jesus Christ. I mean, maybe, just, maybe just find him and give him a swift punch in the face. Yeah, fi- yes, exactly. Like, you know what? Can, can you not cancel me? Just punch me in the mouth. Like, I mean, like, just, I, okay, I did it. I made a dick move. I said something stupid. I did something stupid. Can we just settle this, like, uh, in the old days? And you just punch me in the mouth, and I, yeah. I take it, and we call it a day? Because this oh, cancel just- culture shit is getting insane. It's like, you know, we had the 90s when the one of my favorite movies of all time, PC. You know, you know, you're walking through the campus. It's like, you know, save the whales, save it, uh, uh, release Nelson Mandela. And they're like, they oh, release them. Like, you know, the cause heads. People are always, you know, your life is so good. You have to look for external things to get pissed off about, and that's what's happened. Yeah. You know, this what's happened, and, I, and now it has permeated sports. It is finally, eventually, permeated the sports world. Where if you said a tweet. This happened last year in baseball when we had a full actual season of baseball where people were digging up pitchers and players' tweets from years ago. One of them was quoting rap lyrics written and performed by a black man, and they tried to cancel his ass because he tweeted it. Like, get the hell out of here. What are you doing? This is insane. This is 1984. And if you – this is the end of my fucking political rant, but if you haven't watched that movie – George Orwell's 1984, you need to watch it because if you, when you do, you, you're you going to look around, right or left, you're going to look around and go, oh, shit. This is actually nope. fucking happening. Yeah. People are actually canceling each other for their thoughts uh, th- and, and their words. And that is the absolute worst thing you can possibly fucking do because it's a slippery slope and it's just getting worse. And it's finally gotten worse to the point where it's permeating the sports world. Our last refuge against 
politics and anything else. It's now invading the sports world, and that's why ESPN is losing their ass. But anyways, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, g- given the world we live in right now, I mean, if if I was if I was this kid's age, and I'd be telling him to make a public apology immediately. Uh, You'd almost and, have to. Yeah, which sucks. It's he's, bullshit, but it sucks. But it is the way it is. It's it, he's gonna have no career otherwise. No. Mm. So. What else you got, Angel? Anything? Any? any uh, anything that was, look forward that to? was the main story of the week, and then I was—I okay. mean, I, I pulled up the uh, top twenty-five college football scores because I know we're trying to cover more of that lately. Go for it. Go through um, the top twenty-five for me, real quick. <laughs> so, can. so uh, the number one, uh, Trevor Lawrence-less Clemson Tigers held off Boston College thirty-four twenty-eight. Uh, Lawrence couldn't couldn't play because he tested positive for COVID. Mm-hmm. So he's on a uh, 10 day suspension or however you want to phrase it. Uh, number two, Alabama blew Mississippi State out of the water at 41 to zero. Uh, Pardos is uh, the Ohio, Ohio State, State University mm-hmm. took out number 18, Penn State, 38 uh, 25. Penn State is 0 2 now. They lost to Indiana last week as but well. Th- they, so. <laughs> that, that game was pretty close, though, until the very end. Yeah. I, I was surprised at how, how well Penn State was holding on. Hey, Pook, Pook's got to be happy with Notre Dame. They uh, they won 31-13 over Georgia Tech. They're uh, ranked four currently, and uh, who knows? Maybe they'll make a move. Uh, uh, Georgia, they won 14-3 over Kentucky. Number six, Oklahoma State fell. They got beat by the Texas Longhorns in overtime, 41-34. Cincinnati at number seven beat Memphis 49-10. Texas A&M at number eight beat Arkansas 42-31. Number 10, Florida won 41-17 over Missouri. Um, I don't know. Do you want to go anywhere past the uh, top ten? Wait a minute. Let me ask you a question. Is Cincinnati number seven? Yep. Cincy is ranked number seven right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, they made forays in the years past and into the uh yeah. into the top ten. And yeah, but I just smoked. didn't realize they were that that well this week this year. Yeah, that was wild. Yeah, yeah I me mean, either actually. And uh, just looking for some upsets in here. Uh, Michigan State took out number thirteen <laughs> Michigan. I can't remember twenty four today. Who said it earlier? Uh, uh, it was it was obviously a Michigan fan. Oh, was, yeah, I'll put the comment back up there. Yeah, uh, about Harbaugh needing off. to be fired. Yeah, because <laughs> Michigan lost to Michigan State. Mr. Cobb Curtis, uh, a, one of my best friends in the whole world, and uh, a awesome uh, a guide and fisherman. Uh, if, if I had a link to give you, I would, but uh, he hasn't set that up yet. But uh, he's a big Michigan State <coughs> fan, and uh, yeah, he was he let it be known uh, that <laughs> they beat Michigan, and which I'm sure George Paros was very happy about, and pretty much anybody <laughs> in the Big Ten is very happy about. Because we all pretty much hate – one thing the Big Ten can agree on is that they all hate Michigan. It's just, <laughs> just a thing. And then the, the, other, uh, the other upset in the top 25 was uh, unranked Virginia beat uh, number 15 North Carolina 44-41. to um, And uh, unranked West Virginia – Beat number sixteen Kansas State thirty-seven to ten. We're not laughing at you. We're just laughing yeah, at the comments yeah, that are coming out. Yeah, we, we were talking about you know <laughs> earlier. We were talking about things that you know super things we've done in our past. And Richie the Redneck Pip Kick, Richie the Redneck Pip King, comedian and former United States Marine. Uh, well, I, former active duty, and I shit in a cop car. Mm, oh well, yeah, but you're a comic, man. You know, and you know, if, if you know, if you get on SNL, that's what's gonna kill you they're going to retract that because uh yeah you you, you, you did a chicago steamer in, in in a cop car so it's all good though and i still love you you're one of my faves i think you're yeah, a funny there, guy <clears throat> go so ahead yeah there was there was no other uh upsets in the top 25 but uh wisconsin uh they mm-hmm. did not play their game this week they were <laughs> scheduled to play against nebraska um, after starting off the season with a uh, led by a five touchdown performance from uh, Graham Mertz, their new quarterback, uh, he looked awesome. But unfortunately, well, he tested positive 18, for the COVID antibodies, and and now he can't yeah. play because uh, he's a twenty two year old athlete who's in the prime shape of his life and is going to beat this like a redheaded stepchild. Right. And, yeah, 
So yeah, between yeah. between staff and athlete, twenty five now. Isn't eight, it? Is it twenty five now? Yeah, that's the last last I, I heard, heard was yeah. driving into work on Friday, and it was at eighteen, and it was like yeah. nine nine athletes, and nine staff members that had. Yeah, it, so. it's up to twenty five now, and most of them so, are. It's almost actually it's the same most. It's it's almost evenly split between staff and uh, in in the Big athletes. Ten. The Big Ten, which is. Um, stupid in how they're handling this um, compared to every other conference in uh, in college football. They decided uh, anybody that tests positive for COVID needs to be on a 21-day quarantine instead of a 10-day quarantine. So you can pretty much uh, count Wisconsin season almost over with because all these people that have tested positive are now going to have to sit for three weeks. Yeah, it's over. At yeah. least last I heard, unless yeah. they change that rule by now. Yeah. But uh, and look, last I heard, they they're like, "Oh, you know, the the recommended is ten days, but we're gonna we're gonna go above and beyond and double that." Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's just unfucking believable. Look, it, look I I'm not saying this diseases are real. Of course, this affect people. It's hospitalized people. It's killed people. But when you're a young athlete in the prime shape of your life. You probably don't have any pre-existing conditions, so yeah. you're going to beat this like a redhead stepchild. And to do this is just, I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it just seems just, yeah, it's, you're it's, getting so over the top at it. You know, so over the top. Oh, so 10 days is what we recommend. Oh, okay. Well, then uh, uh, let's do uh, uh, three times that. Uh, let's do 21 <laughs> days. Get the, what are you doing? Like, oh, my God. So Wisconsin's uh, uh, season no, is in, down the drain. And I mean, looking at how their team looked, I mean, it's probably a legitimate top ten team that they just pretty much ended the season on. Yeah, it still um, won't, and they probably never will beat Ohio yeah. State. But anyways, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> yeah, they have bad luck against Ohio State. Um, bad luck. It's not luck. They just can't beat that recruiting machine. Yeah. We, I tried to talk. I wanted to. I think I talked about this last week, and I want to go more in depth with it. But I think. College football is more about rec- college football, college basketball, college baseball. It's all about recruiting more than coaching. Well, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. You got to have the players, and and recruiting gets you the players. Yeah, it's easy to coach studs uh, than it is to coach you know tier two, tier three guys to beat those guys. But I mean, it has happened, you know. But uh, yeah, it just it sucks for Wisconsin, you know. And and now I've got to unfortunately and against every single part of my being and my soul I have to fruit for Ohio State to win the national championship which is like the hardest thing. it's 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 like you know being in the field you know like I don't know like I, my friend of mine who my uh father grew up uh, he grew up knowing my dad Glenn uh who told me how bad it was to actually drink your own piss when he was going through sniper school and he says well you know it was either that or die so I did it so I, I don't want to root for Ohio State, but oh, you know it's a Big Ten thing. So <laughs> there, you know, there gotta root for him. There was another stupid side of this story as well uh, from Uh-oh. the Nebraska Gets... side. Nebraska found an opponent to make up the game that they were going to miss with Wisconsin. Uh, Tennessee Chattanooga agreed to come out to Nebraska to play against them, and the Big Ten told them, "No, you can't play against them because they're not in their conference." So Big Ten's not letting any non-conference games go down, even if it's to make up for an opponent that can't play that week. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's all about yeah. power. It's all about who's in power. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fukens, I bet you a test positive for TB antibodies. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> every single test I would take, I would test positive for it. Um, <laughs> yeah, every, anybody that was in the military would. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Uh, all right. Uh, let's move on. Let's go. Let's do a little NFL. Let's go over the scores real quick. Uh, let me refresh this real quick. And I hate when I say, uh, especially when professional, uh, talking has to do it. That really drives me nuts. <laughs> you can get paid millions of dollars. I, I, I understand Troy Aikman because he got hit so many times in the head and did so much cocaine <laughs> that he has a hard time finding his keys. But, uh, Anyways, uh, finals are as follows. Uh, the Bills eked out the uh, New England hapless, hoodie-headed New England Patriots 24-21. to The uh, Tennessee Titans in a surprise loss. They were 5-1 coming into the game against Joe Burrow and the Bengals. But 
I'm telling you what, I remember saying it earlier in Sports Church about Joe Burrow early in the season. I don't know if this kid's a real deal. Well, uh, I said a couple weeks ago, I think he is, and now it's confirmed. This kid has got something. When the Bengals can keep him on his feet, the dude's deadly. He 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 has really got they got something there, and I hope they use the draft well to protect him because this kid has been a winner at every level, and he continues to try and, and, and just he gives everything. Uh, I love him. I think he's going to be a new, the new face of the franchise as Tom Brady fades away, as Philip Rivers fades away, as, as Aaron Rodgers eventually fades away. Uh, I think you're going to have Joe Burrow as one of those guys. Uh, the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, which is so hard to say, uh, <laughs> defeated the Browns 16-6 to and once again put in question whether Baker Mayfield is the man for Cleveland. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, Philip Rivers, Went off today. I, I knew, just knew it was eventually going to happen. And the first year in about a decade, I haven't drafted Philip Rivers as even a number two or number three quarterback. Uh, he went off today. Four TD passes. I mean, dude was just on fire. Defeated the hapless uh, Detroit Lions, forty-one to twenty-one. In well, a surprise, he was on a two-game winning streak. So it's no, like, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, did anybody amazing. watch the the uh, Steelers and the Ravens? Yes, that was a crazy game. That was a the great Steelers game. Didn't look like they had any chance in that game until the second half, and then they took over. Yes, they did. And speaking of that, the Steelers won. Uh, much to my chagrin, because uh, you know there was one of the teams you just love to hate. Uh, <laughs> the Steelers beat the Ravens uh, twenty to twenty four. Once again, the old men are doing it again. You know, Phil, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, old man. Uh, you know, should retire. He doesn't have any more. Well, he's having a season. Uh, for the ages, and the Steelers are as well. I think they're the only undefeated team left in the yep. NFL. Uh, as they defeated uh, Lamar Jackson, and uh, the game-winning touchdown was broken up. Of course, thrown by Lamar Jackson to my tight end on my fantasy football team, Mark <laughs> Andrews, and it got knocked away. So, of course, that happened. Um, it, it, the Vikings defeated the Packers. Packers are... Ugh. And they were looking so hot early in the season and have, have uh, kind of fallen off the uh, the wagon lately and uh, behind uh, Cook and uh, four TDs by the running back. And if you had him on his fantasy team, I don't know who had him on his fantasy team. Who had that Who had that Minnesota running back on their fantasy team? Hmm. Anybody know? Anybody? No, I, I, no, I Not me. No idea. Yeah, not me either. I think it was, I think it was uh, Mr. Felix Irwin, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, the Vikings. Oh, that's uh, why his score is so pumped up today. Oh, listen to you! <laughs> oh, his score's been pumped up. This guy went off. I think he scored uh, like 50 freaking fantasy well, points. I, I mean, my score's pumped up too, but that's because Devontae Adams had three touchdown catches in that game too. So yeah, and if they pray for AJ Green, it's going to be even worse. Um, hey, Jeff, actually, what was the line on the the? Uh, the Bears and, and uh, whoever. <laughs> Bears and Saints. Bears and the Saints. I believe, the it, line on I believe that. it went off. I believe it went off at five and a half. I I know where it opened at. I got that right here. I believe it went off at five and a half. It opened at um. It opened at four. All right. Well, the Saints got them by three. <laughs> they got them a field goal. Yes. Yes. I, I take it all back. Hey, I'm putting back on my Bears hat. Because you're right. <laughs> you're right. That's the what's more important, them winning or them covering, right? Covering. Covering. That's all. Covering, that's where the covering, money is. Covering. Damn it, you convinced them to put that ugly ass hat back on. Pops <laughs> <laughs> is like telling, he's calling me out. He's like he's like he's like pook. Bear should cost no gambler money. Be proud. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on with the scores. The Jets. Oh and eight. Oof! Lost to the, the not surprisingly the Kansas City Chiefs behind the, the probably one of the new uh, faces of the NFL, uh, Patrick Mahomes, who was just absolute freaking nature. Is, uh, is that Chief, just bad coaching, or is that just a bad team? I think it's both. That's a bad team. Well, yeah, it's both. It's both. Gase, Gase has got to get fired. Yeah. We're, 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 uh, yeah, I mean, he should have already been fired. So. Richie, the redneck thing, asks us when yeah, he's, he's been get fired. How long yeah. until he gets fired? And I'm gonna go uh, probably Monday morning officially. I think he's you gone. You think so? I, uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah. 
against the Chiefs, they were probably like, "Oh, it was expected. We were going to lose." Nah, you, you got to be you amazing gotta, another you, week. You, you have no, you can't, you couldn't pull off a win. And come on, like you, know, you didn't mean, have a great what, season what, last year. What are they going to do? I mean, well, my team, he's not. They're not going to do any better. <laughs> well, there is well, a, there is season. a bump. Yeah, they're, they're, a they're bump just getting they're getting Trevor coach. Lawrence. I mean, that's yeah. that's what it is. <laughs> it so, is what it is. Yeah, so they're they're you, you sometimes actually quite often you get a little bit of a bump when you fire a coach and you get a new guy in there and it kind of pumps everybody up if there's some discord in the locker room about that coach. Yeah. But obviously there has to be because they're 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 absolutely terrible. I don't know how you run a franchise that bad into the ground. But I mean, Christ, let's think about it. The Jets haven't been anything since Joe Namath. So, yeah. you know, there there is that. So there's just a fundamentally fundamental problem from the top down. Uh, let's move on. Dolphins, despite getting 58 yards in the first half in total offense, scored 28 points. Yeah. It didn't score anything unreal. in the third or fourth and still won and beat the uh, Los Angeles Rams 28-17. to 17. Holy crap. Uh, just wow. Um, I yeah. think they made a right right move with that quarterback. What do you think? Oh, yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, Fitzpatrick yeah. has been going off, too. I mean, it's not like Fitzpatrick was playing bad. <laughs> Well, but yeah, I mean, Tua is the future there. So, I, it, well, possibly if, if he doesn't like break in the glass, you know, shatter, yeah, shatter happen, yeah. Tip like glass or something. Yeah, you know, uh, you know that freaking Fitzpatrick man. He'll give you freaking like two good games in a row, and then he'll give you some real bad ones where. He's yeah, going, that's that's yeah. true. I mean, yeah, you know what you have in Fitzpatrick. Tua Last- is kind of a. Uh, kind of untested grounds right now in the NFL. <laughs> Last Thursday, of course, the uh, Falcons uh, defeated the Panthers, which uh, I had three guys going in that game, and none of them did shit except for the one I didn't expect to, and that was Julio Jones. Yeah, Julio kind of, had a good game. He had a good game, but he didn't get a touchdown, but uh, he, had, he had a decent game. And uh, the final game today so far, uh, Seahawks beat the 49ers 37-27. All right, so in the uh, VRS uh, Fall Brawl, which is our fantasy league here, let me share the screen real quick. Uh, there we go. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. You share. can do it. Share, share, share. Oh, my nice. Super slow right now. But there you go. Yeah, I am getting smoked. <laughs> smoked by Pterodactyl. In first place, like oh, this is just brutal. Which is gonna, I think, it all every, all the results today in our league is gonna wind up with just everybody just tied up at like four and four, just about. But Terrell's gonna beat me, uh, ha- just very handily. Uh, J Dub with BBME Shenanigans is gonna probably take out Monday Night Mayhem Lunchbox. Uh, and make sure you check that out tomorrow night, Monday night. Mayhem with Lunchbox and Judy, who was my uh, co-host last night on the uh, Halloween Impromptu Saturday Night Show. If you haven't seen it yet, go to the, the Vet Radio Syndicate page and check that out and watch it and share it. It was pretty fun, pretty good time. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think um, J Dub's going to topple uh, Lunchbox there. Uh, Oops, Pops, uh, which is of course Pops going against Poop Dogs. Looks like he's going to pull that out. Uh, it's going to be close, though. He's, it's going to be gonna, close. It's going to be real close. Yeah, he's going to have to have some people step up to ensure that victory. Because yeah. uh, you, you guys both have people going tonight and tomorrow, so yep. we, we shall see. And uh, Foolish uh, Samurais, who, uh, uh, yeah, um, started out like a gangbuster and apparently forgot to set some of his lineup today. Uh, it's going to go down to the guy who's going to score the highest total this week for the first time in eight weeks, who that nation, Mr. Felix Irving, are the HMFIC of our sponsor, Beer BQ Sauce. Make sure you get over to beerbrecusauce.com. Check out his website and go to Facebook as well. You can uh, search Beer BQ Sauce and click the Shop Now button and uh, check out all his uh, all his gear and his sauces and, and his rubs. Um, yeah, but it looks like uh, he's going to... He's going to smoke Foolish Soul. It looks like everything is going to get jammed up because as of right now, you know, this is how it stands right now. Uh, Terrell in first. I'm in second. Foolish Samurai, J-Dub, Pops, Lunchbox, Pook, Hoodat, 
and there's going to be a whole bunch of four and fours in there right now. And T's going to go six and six and two. Uh, so we don't like him for a lot of reasons. No, that's but okay. That's He'll get knocked off in the playoffs. Well, I hope he does, and I hope I, I hope uh, I play him in the like, first round. The, yeah, it'll be the opposite of last year. I had a shitty start to the season, and then uh, yeah. Minnie had a great start, and then we played each other in the first round, and I somehow pulled it out against him in the first yeah, round. He didn't pull it out. He yeah. smoked me. It was it was like oh my, I was like oh my god, what is going on? And yeah, so. <laughs> That, so, yeah, that's, that's how it'll work this year. I'll, I'll I'll go into the playoffs. Number one and mini will take me out in the first round <laughs> just to get revenge from last year. Oh, God, I hope so. I hope so. I don't even care if I win. As long as I beat you, I'll be very happy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, honestly, like, if I even make the playoffs, I'm, I'm going to be happy because think about this, guys. I lost yeah, you started my first like two. like 0 4, right? Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I lost my first two draft picks. My first round and my second round draft pick. I lost them both. That's insane. And I'm still hanging. Like, I, I you know, Pook, for you, buddy. Love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I lost my, anybody else here lost their first two draft picks? No. Anyways, all right. So moving no, on. Just my number uh, one so I lost far. all of mine. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, but, what's, what's going on with Michael Thomas? Because he's not in. He, I thought he was not injured anymore, but they haven't been playing him since he punched. Dude well, yeah. Well, apparently he hurt his ankle in practice. That's the story. I don't know. I don't I know. But I think I, they're I, gonna I, try to trade him at because I, I think something's got to be going on there with the team that he ain't getting not getting along with the rest of his team or something. The um, the uh, <laughs> Jason. I thought I made you cry, Pook, when you went off camera. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I would love to have Michael Thomas or A.J. Green in Green Bay. I would love that. Uh, give Aaron Rodgers another weapon. I think that offense would be unstoppable. Uh, well, you know because... you know what team I think is going to have a fire sale and has some good wide receivers on it is the Houston Texans. The, yeah. the Packers could make a trade to get, you know, Will Fuller or Brandon Cooks or even bring Randall Cobb back. Yeah, that's he knows true. the offense. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, true. But true, uh, true I, I think, yeah, I think the, um, I think the Texans are going to be the team that's going to be selling this year. Yeah. Uh. Well, there's a lot of teams that could be. I mean, you know, that they actually have the talent. Dallas is one of them. New England is one of them. Yeah, Dallas uh, could have a fire sale, especially yeah. their their season's going nowhere, right? especially with Dak injured out for the rest of the year. Yep. So we but, shall see it. But the East is so terrible, they could still end up winning. <laughs> They're under 500 and make the playoffs, yes. <laughs> yeah, because the Giants are terrible. Now, she said now Dallas just fumbled. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That was only, what, like three minutes apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the NFC East is beast. That's, that's so the beast. NFC East for you. Oh, my God. All right, let's wrap it up. Unless you guys got any comments about the NFL or fantasy today, yeah, if you do, please speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, we'll go to, may, go to Major League Baseball so we can talk about them Dodgers being the Rays. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, I mean, I did I did predict that that was going to happen. I, I, I didn't think that the Do the Rays could uh, outlast that, all that talent. I thought the Dodgers were just going to wear them down. And I, and I was right for once. Yeah. Uh, it's weird. Uh, the, the but yeah, memes, the memes after the last game were pretty funny though. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who was who the pitcher that was, uh, was, uh, skunk in the Dodgers. He's like the, yeah, like the Dodger, the, um, the girl from, uh, Thor, uh, what was the last Thor movie or, uh, Ragnarok, Ragnarok or whatever. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. The girl like you can't defeat me with the Dodgers head <laughs> <laughs> with the, or no, it was the, the pitcher. And then. They showed the other pitcher, the relief pitcher, come up, and he's like, "I know, but he can." <laughs> I just uh, couldn't believe that, that, that. I couldn't believe they pulled that pitcher. Uh, that was absolutely nuts. That was, yeah. that was a, a Sparky Anderson move, if there ever was one. Oh Anderson yeah, move. yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get hit, uh, deep ball hit, and, and you're you're out. And yeah, that was a mistake. But you know, hey, uh, we can armchair quarterback that all day for sure. But for those of you who don't know, been living on a different yeah, the planet. internet already armchair yeah. quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the Dodgers won the World Series in six games. Uh, the MVP was, was Corey Seager, uh, and congrats to him. He had a hell of a series for sure. Um, 
you know, he has corrected what what was one of the worst um, <laughs> swings in Major League Baseball. You, you all you had to do was throw the pitch in inside and, and belt high, and he couldn't hit it. Uh, and he has since turned that around and changed his batting stance, adjusted how how, how he attacks the plate, the ball to plate. Uh, he's he's. He had a great series. I, I thought it might have been Justin Turner. There was a couple guys that were probably up there. But, uh, yeah. again, the Dodgers just – I mean, they were the best team in baseball all all year yeah. round. And, you know, I was rooting for – against my National League traditions and my blood, I was rooting for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. But in my, uh, in, my, in my heart, I wanted them to win. But my head was telling me, you just can't beat those Dodgers. And I was surprised it actually took them six games. But, uh, yeah, they did it. It was great. Uh, great quote. Uh, great but question. Now, Hold on. does this make the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the favorite in football? Because Los Angeles had the <laughs> uh, NBA Finals title yeah. and yeah. the World Series title. And Tampa Bay's got the Stanley Cup. So are they going to be a two-championship city? No. Maybe they just came. <laughs> maybe it just. No. Paid it forward for it. Even, uh, if they, even if they win the NFC, Kansas City is going to repeat. Off, yeah, but other yeah. than that, no way. I think Kansas City is going to repeat, unfortunately. Although, yeah. you got to watch out for, for those Pittsburgh Steelers. We, we didn't talk enough about that, but they, they're 7-0, and and nobody yeah, including myself I, saw that coming. So I thought they were going to lose. I thought they were going to lose today. I thought today oh, sure. They, they looked today. like they were whooped. They were, they were down and well, out. Even before the game started, I was like, oh, well, really? this will be the week that, uh, that every, every team has got at least one loss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not so much. I don't much. think we're going to come um, to a week where every team has at least one win. I don't think the jets are winning a game all year. <laughs> but let's say Jimmy Kimmel asked the Dodgers of easier to win when the other team isn't cheating. Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure the Dodgers would have probably be like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it was, uh, another baseball news. The Cubs turned down a $25 million club option on ace John Lester. However, John can retire very comfortably, even though he's made a ton of money, he can sit on his ass for the next five years and guess how much money he's going to be paid by the Cubs for the next five years. And you want to take a guess? I have no idea. Poop? It's going to be like one of those, um, who is it? Bob, um, I don't know. Bobby I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, he's going to make $10 million over the next five years. $2 million every that. year. Yeah. I never get that. Yep. And if I didn't need another reason, another reason to hate the Chicago White Sox. Who every oh, time yeah, I drove I an I ninety four, I would flip off that stadium on principle, which confused <laughs> several drivers in my lifetime. But that's okay. Chicago people are, you know, it's a big city. People are used to like, you know, that happening. But uh, every time I drove by what I still call Comiskey Park, or I call the cell block, because they actually have a jail built into the stadium because the fans are so whiskey tango, it's ridiculous. <laughs> if you don't know what whiskey tango is, Google it and you'll figure it out. Um, is it called Comiskey Park anymore? No, it's called Cellular Field. Um, yeah. I'm way behind the times. The it's White Sox it. hired Tony La Russa. The longtime A's and St. Louis Cardinals manager, yeah. who I hate with every breath that I breathe and will to will until the day I die. I hate Tony La Russa. I think he's a douche. I think he, he, he taught McGuire how to use steroids. But well, <laughs> one other reason I hate him. Uh, yeah, another reason I hate him. I guess, go, oh. I guess, yeah, when I was hearing the story, too, I guess La Russa started his career, his first managing job was with the White Sox back when he was like 37 years old, and now he's, mm. what, 70. Four or something like that. Hey, it worked for it, it. worked for the Cubs, you know, when they hired old Joe. But uh, yeah, so yeah, that's the end of baseball. Um, let's do some final thoughts. I mean, God, I can't believe it. Not, I really, I can't wait to buy the MLB package and and get James to. I'm just gonna teach him to like when I put the White Sox game on, just throw something at TV. <laughs> you have him just throw something. Just, uh, um, but uh, yeah, well. We're going to wait for some uh, – NASCAR is going to wrap up. Um, we're still going to talk about the UFC, NHL. We're going to talk about some off-season stuff, MLB off-season stuff. Uh, but we're going to concentrate more in the next couple of weeks on uh, NFL football, college football, and hopefully we have a uh, 
they complete both seasons and hopefully we get a college uh a basketball season here started not too soon. It is going to be tough because they canceled a lot of the uh preseason like tournaments already, like they do in Hawaii and whatnot. So we'll see. Uh good news for Kentucky Wildcats fans, they just signed a uh star five recruit, uh power forward. So if you're uh, that will declare for the draft after one year of playing there. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> I would too. Uh, it's, but, that's uh, the Kentucky model. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, uh, it, 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 but it's one of them national championships. So, mm, what do yeah, you do? Won them a few national championships. All right. <laughs> so, final thoughts, Pook. Since you were up first, you're gonna go first. And final thoughts. All right, sure thing. Uh, final thoughts would be, I'm a fan. You know, I don't always get everything right, but I th- I think you know George and I, we kind of. We're kind of saying the same thing, but but he he had a problem with some of the detail oriented stuff that that I was that I was talking about. I will let you know Buck I mean? I, it was. I think he was saying a lot of what you were saying, so it, it wasn't it wasn't any big deal. It really yeah, no, but I, I mean, like eighty percent of the time. Well, just 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 wanted to say as my final thought today, though, I am just a fan. I am not on the inside of the USC. I never claim to be on the inside of UFC. George obviously is on the inside of the UFC, being that he's a wrestling coach and that uh that he went to the Ohio Ohio State? The, the Ohio, Ohio, State. Ohio, State. Ohio State University. The, the Ohio is that what they call that place? Yeah. The, uh, the you gotta, you gotta stress the V the, the, the Ohio, State. Ohio State University and you know his his uh his partner in crime is uh none other than the the great Hammer House champion, uh, Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman. I couldn't think of his name, but I mean, obviously, so obviously, the guy's on the inside of things, and he knows a little bit what more what's going on than I do. So that's all I wanted to say. Apologize for any discrepancy, things that might not have been accurate. Oh, dude, you did a great job as always, Pooh. Yeah. Uh, I, I wouldn't let it bug you at all because he didn't. He he did not. He did not correct anything you said. He just expanded what you were saying. So it was kind of cool. Here's the thing, Pops. I didn't remember what I said. I agree with everything. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God! All right. Shut up and be humble because this guy actually trains with these fighters <laughs> and everything, and he's a you know. So I'm like, all right. All right, team. What you got? Hey, uh, Pook, I got a question for you. Did you get my message about uh, the uh, planned trip to Chicago? He's not no, using no, the message anymore. Oh, I texted that? you because I got to text Minnie and stuff about it too because I'm trying to – maybe we'll try to work out our first ever sports church meetup. Oh, yeah. But well, I think I, we talked about it. When we texted him back and forth, I got – when we were texting, we were talking about it. We either talked yeah. about it or texted back and forth a little bit about it. Yeah, I sent I sent the day. I, I think November 14th we're going to try to get down to – November Chicago. 14th? Yeah, yeah. Uh, not okay. not next weekend, but the All weekend right. after. I'll we're be gonna there. We're going to try to get down to Chicago. So, be there, baby um, boy. And then, yeah, oh, maybe if you want to come out there, we could actually have our first – Actual meeting each other in person meetup. Oh, you guys could do sports church at a sports bar in Chicago. Yeah, that would be awesome. That would be hilarious. <laughs> that would be awesome. Sports yeah. church. Yeah, sports yeah. church live. Um, we're we're all in the same room. <laughs> Probably uh, be on a patio with this Chicago, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. It is. Yeah, I don't even know if we could do that now. You have to check the lockdown status. Down there, down, you know? man. Yeah, and maybe there ain't no patio on Chicago. Yeah, yeah we're gonna be freaking... we gotta check that shit out because yeah, they're going. Yeah, check that out and, and let me know. Oh, we, they're they're mayor's a fucking out. control freak. Maybe you do it in a hotel room or something like that. Um, all right, pops, what's your final thoughts? Uh, just waiting to see uh, how the uh, the final four come out in the uh, in NASCAR. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm happy as hell that uh, Kyle Larson is going to be back in to running the five car next year. So that'll be neat to see. That was uh, Terry Labonte's old car. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, so it, it, it's got a great history. And uh, to be, like I said, it's a championship t- uh, quality car. So remember, remember who, the, whose favorite driver that was? 
Who favorite driver was that? Did you like uh, him? No. Harry Levani? No, that was the uh, a ginger that. Uh, oh was, yeah. Yeah, that was married <laughs> to. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so my final thoughts. I'm gonna end the show with a little bit of a clip. It might get us in trouble, but I don't really care because I thought it was it was pretty great. And Pook will. Everybody will recognize actually who this guy is. But uh, hey, remember. Never take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. We're all here for you, and every veteran around there should be, and, and a lot of them are. But uh, I'm going to end the show with this that I found on YouTube. So give me one second to pull this up. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Yep, there we go. Boom. Here we go. Jorge Masvall. <laughs> Don't have the audio. Yeah, I can't hear it. It's coming. It should. Is it not coming through? You son of a bitch. No audio. Still no no audio. audio, huh? Huh. I wonder why. Go down the bottom. Yeah, really, you gotta crank it up. Yeah, you gotta crank there the go. audio up. There you go. Crank it up. Apparently your your audio doesn't feed in. Or not very well. Ah, <laughs> uh, sh- shit. Sounds like Georgia Forge is whispering to me in my ear. Oh, well. Well, it was uh, Jorge Manzoval talking about how he's endorsing Trump and that, uh, you know, Democrats have taken the Latino vote for yeah. uh, granted for too long. And, uh, you know, we have head on our shoulders and we should be treated like that. And just because you play some Mexican song, or Latino song on your cell phone when you're doing a campaign <laughs> stop doesn't mean we I'm gonna vote for you and it actually makes me want to vote against you just because you're pandering. So I don't know why the audio didn't come through. I have no idea. It's 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 come through perfect before, but it is what it is. So yeah, yeah ex- actually, you know, playing that clip though, yeah, that's that's a good final thought. Uh, let's not elect somebody that we now have emails on that is owned by foreign entities. So yeah. Get out and vote, and don't vote for fucking Biden that's owned by the Chinese yeah. and the uh, Russians, and especially Canadians. if you value your daughter not being sniffed at. Um. Yeah, or, <laughs> or you know, having the son of the president, you know, having sex pictures while smoking you know what, crack what, with a fourteen-year-old relative. <laughs> All right, hey, hold you know on what? a second. I'm just- I'm gonna hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna kill the show. We'll talk afterwards. All right, we're, 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 we're done. Yeah, we're, we're done with this. Much trouble that way. We're done oh, with me, this. I love oh, you guys. You Thank you for this. tuning in, and and we're gonna kill the show. Thank you for tuning in. Please share the show out. This is the first time you've seen it. Please share it out again. Uh, and a hey, Debbie. Uh, oh my God, you know I'm Irish and uh, uh, quite a bit of German too. But this McCluskin, I hope I got it right. Thanks for tuning in. Love you. Love you, Richie. Love you, Fukin Censorship. I know who you are, actually. I know it's your alt- alternate account, Jay Lopez. Have a great night. Stay safe. Love you all. Uh, and, hey, share the show out and, and give us some love. Love you all, and we'll be back next week to uh, break down the world in sports, which is getting a little bit smaller uh, <laughs> for the next couple of months. So, uh, yeah, love you all. Love you, Pook. Love you, T. Love you, Pops. And uh, love Vet Raider Syndicate and all that it is. Peace.